Welcome, everybody, to the Become a Billionaire with Me podcast. Today, I have Shannon. Uh, Shannon, would you mind telling us a little bit about yourself? Sure. My name is Shannon Robnett. Uh, I'm a local developer here in uh, Boise, Idaho, which some of you think uh, potatoes when you think about it, but we're actually <laughs> one of the fastest growing markets in the nation right now. And uh, we do multifamily and industrial development and construction. How did you get into that? That's uh you know, I probably crazy. should have gone to college, but uh, it's been a family business. My father's been a general contractor and developer here in the Valley. My brother builds custom homes. And so it's just kind of where I wound up after uh, years of, of doing the business. I just saw how much I loved it and just kind of kept going. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. You know, college isn't for everybody. You know, I know a lot of people who are very wealthy that have never even stepped in the you know college classroom. So. Yeah. yeah, you know, college is college is one of those things that it, it can definitely be helpful. But uh, as you probably know, just getting out there in the streets and doing the deals is really where the, the lessons are learned. And, and you know, class is taught at the title companies and, and uh, you know, driving around with your realtor and finding the deal. That's that's where you're really learning the lessons. Yeah, that's definitely true. Awesome. Well, you, you mentioned, you know, you, you're doing uh, new builds and I know you're doing uh, ground up construction on a, is it a 36 unit right now? Well, I've got a 36 unit that we just broke ground on and a 191 unit uh, complex as well that we're just, uh, we've just broke ground on both of those. Uh, and we've got a couple hundred units in the pipeline up here uh, from uh, affordable to senior. So we Wow. But I know that you mentioned your, your family is in this business. I mean, where did you get started? I mean, you ju you can't just start from, you know, start, say like, oh, I'm going to build 100 units. You know, you can't say like, oh, I'm going to build 50 units. <laughs> no. What was your first project and what did it look like? Uh, well, my first project was an industrial building, uh, but I worked for my dad. Uh, I, I guess you you can't really call it work for it because I wasn't getting paid and, yeah. and uh, you know, but I grew up in the business. And so I, I went out at, at 21. Uh, I I got my first contract to build a building and I built a uh, uh, 8,000 square foot office warehouse for a guy. And I just kind of have grown from there. And yeah. I always saw that people wanted something in the market that wasn't there. And so I always had to kind of be on the forefront of finding, finding the deal for my clients. And pretty soon I found out that it was a lot more lucrative to do it for myself than it was just to, uh, always be chasing the client. And so we just kind of shifted gears a little bit. We still work for other people, but the majority of what we do is uh, development uh, of, of finding the property, uh, taking it through the cities, getting it annexed, rezoned, uh, designing the product, building the product, uh, stabilizing it, and then from there, uh, moving the product onto a new buyer. Yeah. And what, what type of timeline are we looking at for a new build? You know, obviously you can't build it in six months. You know, I know permitting and all that takes a long time. What, what's the timeline look like from when the day that you find your property and the day that the first tenant moves in? Well, we, uh, you know, it, it, it kind of depends on the size and the complexity, but, you know, we're able to build a 12 unit building in about, about six months up here. Uh, wow. so we're, yeah. So we're, we're able to turn uh, the last 180 unit apartment complex. We were just under two years from the time we broke ground to the time we had the final unit finished. Yeah. Um, and uh, we were able to stabilize that uh, five months after that. So, you know, we're, um, and, and, you know, it, the jurisdictions up here are a little bit easier to work with uh, than, than in some of the larger metropolitan areas. But by and large, we can, we can turn out, um, you know, a, a 12 to 24 unit building in, in a period of uh, five to seven months. Wow. That's super fast. That's, that's uh, the timeline that it takes some people to rehab a single family house. That's yeah. Insane. yeah. I got an <laughs> uncle like that. <laughs> <laughs> what, what are, what's your secret, man? I mean, what's, I mean, what's your process look like? Why are you so much faster than some people, you know, can, so yeah, some people can take, you know, up to six to eight months, even a year. To remodel the house how are you doing this yeah. you know so quickly? well you know one of the things is I, I i've been in the business for 20 years I, I i work with some of the same subcontractors that my dad worked with uh in fact my block layer uh is the son of the guy that used to lay block for my dad so you know i got 20 years of contacts i've got the same guys all the time 
you know, uh, I let them know we got a project coming up in six months. I'm getting the guys I need. We're getting the projects done, you know, because I mean, it, it doesn't take a genius to, to realize that the, the, the phrase time is money means so much more when you're multiplying yeah. it by 180 or 250 doors. Uh, and so to be able to get in there and handle it quickly and do it now um, and, and get that turned over during uh, prime leasing season is, is really important. And it's worth, sometimes it's worth a little bit more money to get it done quickly uh, because, you know, you're knocking it down. In <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's, that's pretty awesome, man. And are you uh, focusing in only Idaho or are you doing this? Um, in out, yeah. Out you know, uh, Currently in Idaho, we've got about a three, about a 2.8 to a 3.1 percent vacancy rate, um, and we're uh, one of the top five growth states in the nation right now. Uh, so I don't have to go anywhere else to get work. I mean, I understand. I see people that you know they do a deal in Phoenix and then they go do a deal in Washington D.C. and they're they're bouncing all over the place to find the deal where. You know, we're in a high growth market. I've got my subs. I've got my stable of, of steady uh, clients and customers. And I just, I haven't had to branch out of the market. Uh, and we're still, you know, we're still doing close to 200 doors a year. Wow. That's, that's pretty awesome. That's, that's awesome. What, um, what would you recommend a newbie do to get into this business? I know you can't just start your construction company overnight and, you know, scale as large as you guys are. Um, what would you recommend a newbie do? You know, I, I, I've been asked that question so many times in the last two months. It's almost, I, I just need to get a shirt that says, you know, uh, it's, instead of what would Jesus do, what would a realtor do? Uh, you know, because I, I have people ask me that. But, you know, the reality is if you can just get your hands on a deal, yeah. if you can just get your first deal going, it will lead to the second, will lead to the third. And, you know, once you have, have, completed one it really teaches you how to scale that right so on your i mean I, I got a couple of kids and you know you always learn on the first one but if you you know if, if you look at what it takes to do one and and you've done that three or four times then doing a fourplex is all of a sudden manageable and then after you've done a couple of fourplexes then maybe doing a a, a 20 unit rehab is manageable but you know the thing that i know uh is that what what stops most people is the fear of of failure and and really just taking that first deal down and and getting that complete is is really really probably the best thing you can do mm -hmm. and then creating that belief system in yourself that you can do it and then having uh others believe you as well like the banks and the people that you know are, are partnering with you or borrowing money or that you're borrowing money from you know and, and just growing that ability uh to expand um is is really what allows uh, has allowed me to do what i've done and i know that you know i didn't i i, I often have had conversations with the people that you know my lenders and things like that about wanting to do more and they're they're always kind of like you know, you can only grow so fast. Yeah. We, we can only trust you so much each year in, in what we've loaned you. I mean, you know, now you're, you're borrowing $30 million at a swipe where, you know, four years ago you were borrowing eight and now, you know, we're, it, it, it's a bigger deal and we, we've got to grow with you. And so, you know, a lot of people look at that and go, man, I, I don't want to grow slow, but it really starts with that first deal, completing it, winning and doing it again and again. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's, that's true, man. That's, it's all about just getting started, right? Learning that muscle yeah. memory and uh, just going from there. That's, that's awesome. What would you tell yourself, uh, a younger version of yourself, um, if you can start all over again? You know, a uh, younger version of myself, uh, I would probably, um, I would probably remind myself not to sell some of the things I sold. <laughs> yeah, I hear that. Uh, you know, the, the reality is that being able to do what I do is, is a lot of fun. Uh, there's a lot of reward to it because you stand back at the end of the day and go, Hey man, I built that industrial complex or, you know, we, we built these buildings over here or, you know, people are living in the places that we built. And, uh, but, you know, if I would have uh, held on to uh, some of the, the deals that I sold because I thought I was 
using that as a stepping stone. Yeah. But the banks really like to see that cash flow. You know, lenders really like to see that you're that you're holding on to stuff and creating value. Um, and so I think I think that that would be the one thing is that you know making a buck turning a unit or turning a project is one thing, but making cash flow and hanging on to that cash flow, there's a lot more to be said about that. Yeah, that's definitely true. Yeah, that's true. And you mentioned um, you're at your property management office. So I take it that you, you guys have a construction company to build these things and then a property management to, to manage these things. Is that correct? Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm a bit of a control freak, uh, but you know, a lot of property management companies, they manage, uh, they manage in a different fashion. Uh, they, they manage for occupancy. So they're not afraid to give concessions. Uh, they're, you know, they're not worried about, you know, what the rents are. Uh, they just want to make sure that when they give the owner the report, they're showing that they're 99% occupied and they, you know, they got good things going. They don't care that the lawn guy didn't really do a great job. Uh, they don't, they don't manage the swimming pool properly. Uh, you know, the, re and the reality is I've always tried to make my property, uh, the best one in the area and make it a choice of, uh, of, of pricing in, in that my property is always going to be $35 more than the next guy. Yeah. But if you take 180 doors at 35 bucks a door at the cap rates that we're seeing today, you can see that my management style makes a ton of sense when it comes to the bottom line, because people are picking mine because it's a superior property kept in better shape with more responsive team on site. Yeah. And that pays off. That pays off huge when you're looking at values. Yeah, that's, that's true. I'm kind of of the same mindset, man. Um, I, ha I haven't done a <clears throat> multifamily, but, you know, just owning a, a out-of-state single-family portfolio, you know, just these property managers at the end of the day, they don't really have, at least the ones that I've worked with, don't have your best interest, you know, in mind. Um, at the end of the day, they're a business and they need to make money as well, you know, and sending. Yeah, and you know what? There's <laughs> a ton of money to be made as long as they have the understanding of what it takes to make the owner money. Yeah. And I think that a lot of times a property management company loses, uh, loses sight of the customer and they look at it going, I saved the owner money because I didn't repaint that room or I didn't replace that carpet. Yeah. And the reality is if you replace $500 with a carpet and you get another $70 a month, uh, you paid for that inside of the lease that the tenant yeah. has. It also works for the next tenant. Plus look at what you've done to the value of the property when you run it by a cap rate. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Very true. Yeah. That's, that's true. What, um, when you're looking for properties, um, to, to build on, what, what do you look for? Are there flat land slope special in special areas close to freeways or are you just looking just for the next available plot that's buildable? No, I think, you know, I think a lot of that, um, is, is very important. One of the things that people don't figure is that, um, you know, construction costs are kind of the same across the demographic. So if you look at, you know, my area here, you know, my construction costs are, are the same within a 50 mile radius. My property values though are very different and my rental prices are very different. And so, you know, some people like to go with the cheapest piece of ground they can find and that's on the outskirts of town and know that town will grow to them. I tend to like to be right in the center. Um, so I pay a little bit more for my dirt. Uh, but you know, like I got a 190 unit project going right across the street from a, a 58 acre park. Uh, there's going to be a brand new middle school built on the other side of the road. Uh, there's a brand new junior high right down the street and I'm three miles from the freeway. So I really look at where my people are going to live because, you know, right now the economy is super hot and that's great. And everybody loves a hot economy, but you got to survive the slow one and you got to survive the winter. Uh, when people don't want to rent your space and you've got the guy that's, you know, out at the edge of the edge of the world uh, where you got a guy that's right downtown right across the street from the park. It's in a great location, easy freeway access, but not listening to the freeway noise. You know, so that's kind of all the things that I look at. And then I look at uh, I look at the rents in the area and make sure that I'm going to be in the higher rent areas part of town, because if you really look at it, your cost for your land uh, in in the scope of where uh, where your overall costs are, you know, they're so small that if you were to, were to 
increase the price of your land, it's not going to make that much difference. I mean, for example, in this in this next deal that I uh, 190 units we just broke ground on, uh, my land in in the whole overall deal is eight percent of my total cost. And mm -hmm. so if I were to pay double for my land and get uh, another couple hundred dollars a, a unit out of it, uh, that puts my value in my project that takes it from, you know, 50 up to 73,000 or $73 million. And that changes the scope of things that really kind of puts us in a different realm because my building costs stay the same. Yeah. Well, wow, that's, that's cool. And what are there specific uh, tricks or things that, that you guys are using when building these things? Are there special windows that you guys like to use or floor or tile that just, you know, is a lot more economical and just helps you guys speed the process up and save money? You know, one of the things that we like to do, I, I build, uh, there, there's kind of two theories, you know, there's the, there's the cheapest carpet you can buy uh, because a tenant's going to trash it or you buy the, the carpet that you hope you can get seven years out of the full nylon uh, blend with the with the uh, cotton back instead of the jute so it doesn't tear up the baseboard. I tend to go toward the high side uh, with granite or quartz countertops, stainless steel appliances because we are building new and I would like to get seven to ten years out of them before I got to rehab them, which means that I'm I'm running out six seven years and then going to flip them, uh, sell them out at that point. They've got a good track risk uh, track record to them, a good history there. And uh, I'm able to get top dollar for them because they're in a well-established neighborhood. But, you know, we do do uh, the plank flooring. Uh, most of our units now are running with the, the uh, plank look uh, on the vinyl flooring yeah. because, you know, a guy can come in and knock that out. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's cool. And once you guys are completed with the project, are there any type of value add things that you guys can do or that you guys like to do like offer dog friendly units or, or anything like that yeah. covered parking yeah so we do that we have all kinds of uh, add-ons so one of the things that we do is we offer the cable and the internet package in bulk mm -hmm. uh, so we buy it and then we resell it to our tenants which is a great deal uh, you know and that's something that they that we even started doing in our single family product that we manage because you know if you put a contract on your your property and you've got a tenant that's there for six or eight months you know they're bringing dish from one area but it doesn't work in this area so they got to switch to cable one or or spark light or whatever but if you're providing that then you're able to capture an extra 30 or 40 dollars on that and you know 30 or 40 bucks a month i mean that adds up right so so we do that we do the dog friendly units um we have uh ground floor units we actually charge a premium for you know so we we've got a uh we've got kind of a a sweet gig where you know our property management team is pretty pretty tuned in to what's what we can get extras for and uh you know because a couple bucks here a couple bucks there it definitely adds up especially when you're looking at the life of the project yeah yeah that's definitely true that's definitely true um that's awesome what's what's the best way to to find a deal to to find a piece of land are you contacting owners directly i mean are you working with brokers what's what's your uh you know, uh, so I've been in the area for 20 years and I've got a pretty good network. Everybody knows I'm, I'm looking for another piece. So I get real estate agents bringing it to me. Uh, but I also have, you know, I, I, I make it a point to drive to work a different way every single day. Uh, just because I can drive through another part of town. I can look at it from a different point of view. You know, this has been a big field. Now it's split in half. There's these guys are building this over here. This would be a great spot for me to do something, yeah. you know? And so I'm constantly, I'm not limiting myself to one way of finding something. I'm all over the board and I'm doing everything I can because it is a hot market and, and everybody's hustling for a deal. But I got to tell you, a good, strong network of people that know what you want uh, maybe using a couple of different realtors, you know, talking to your friends and family. I mean, you know, this piece that I just, uh, we just got started on, uh, was a friend of the family that knew that the family wanted to sell. So they told me about it and I went and approached them. So it's, it really is, uh, you know, jumping in and doing anything you can to find the land. Yeah, that's cool. And, uh, what's the best way to, to fund these things? I know you mentioned bank financing, but are you using bank financing all these properties? You know, I do, uh, I do a couple of different things, but we use uh, a PREF equity structure where we've got a, a PREF piece on there. We've got, you know, sponsor equity and, and uh, PREF and then the bank financing that comes in for, 
for that part of it. Um, and so we've got a couple of different ways that we stack our capital, but for the most part, you know, we've, uh, we've got a good strong following of people that, that like to get into our deals, that like the returns that we're posting. Um, and then at the completion of the construction, um, you know, we're paying out on that. We've met our goals. Uh, then we're putting our permanent financing on it and carrying it on from there. Yeah. And what's a typical hold time for, for an investor? If, you know, someone wants to come with you, come to you and be like, Hey, I have 50 or hundred grand to, to get into this deal. When, when would they receive that money back? You know, the nice thing is, uh, depending on the size. So we talked about the two different sizes. I got a, the one project that's 36 units, you know, that's, that's, that deal is going to be over and done in, in 12 months, right? So that thing's going to be stabilized and sold in 12 months. Uh, so, and that's, that's posting, that's going to show about a 21%, 22% IRR. Um, and uh, then, you know, the 190 unit project that we've got, that's going to be about a two, two and a half year deal. Um, and that's going to post a little bit better return, but because it's longer, um, you know, but, uh, and then once those, once those reach stabilization, then we look at a different group because, you know, ground up is different than, than a value add where you're getting some cash flow now and, you know, you're, you're kind of getting your needs met on a daily basis or a monthly basis as far as some cash flow. A ground up deal doesn't do that, but we kind of put it in a different pot once we've got it built. Uh, then we go out to more of a, a waterfall syndication program. Uh, that, that, you know, most people are familiar with that uh, then shows, you know, that uh, seven year, five to seven year hold period that's, that's pushing a, you know, 20, 24% IRR. Yeah. Maybe for the newbie investors, can, can, we, can you shed some light on what a waterfall syndication is? Just a quick highlight. Yeah. So, uh, you know, the, the waterfall is a great method because it ties everybody together. Uh, the better that the developer does for everyone, the more, the larger piece of the pie that he gets. So uh, in, in the, the last deal we did, we had the split that er the prep equity was getting a 9% return uh, guaranteed. And then uh, if we provided over a 15% return uh, at the 9%, we were getting 20% of the profits. Uh, if we got the investor over a 15% return, then we were going to get 35% of the profits. And then when we reached a 20% IRR, uh, then we were able to get half of the profits. So as it grew, and, and it sounds funny, like, you know, I'm getting now, the developer is getting half the profits. Uh, that means that the, the investor is getting less. But because the, the, the return grew, the profits grew, uh, actually the investor gets more. Mm -hmm. And so at the end of the day, everybody winds up with, with a better deal, but it, but it really lands on my shoulders. If I want to win, then I've got to put a deal together that leaves plenty of meat on the bone, uh, that gets us a great return, that makes sure that my investors make that 18, 20, 21% that they're looking for. And then after that, they're able to really kind of maximize uh, their return and I'm able to maximize mine. Wow. That's, that's awesome. It seems like you got to, Pretty good setup there for, for your investors. That's great. As we, uh, as we close out here, maybe just a couple fun questions. Uh, what's the fun fact about you that uh, people might not know? Uh, let's see. I got another business uh, that uh, I teach people how to fly airplanes. So we've got a, we've got an aviation division as well. Property wow. management and aviation, you know, they go hand in hand, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Wow, that's yeah. awesome. That's that's interesting. So, how long have you been flying for? Uh, I've been flying for about twelve years. So, yeah. uh, and then uh, my son is in the process of getting his uh, instructor's license, so he'll be teaching people right along with me. Yeah, like in Cessnas or something like that. Yeah, Cessnas and then Diamonds. Oh, so, okay. Well, wow, that's, yeah, that's awesome. I keep trying to tell my wife Diamonds are a girl's best friend, but she wouldn't let me get one for Valentine's Day. So. Oh man, <laughs> <laughs> that's terrible, man. Yeah. yeah. yeah they, they have some pretty nice, awesome little 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 planes. My um my yeah. big bro in the fraternity, he's he was into flying, and his mom owned like a pilot school, and yeah, he's had me around all that cool stuff. He's like, hey, check out this plane. Let's go take it out. Like, yeah, it was that's an awesome area. That's, that's yeah, awesome. yeah, it is. Yeah, that's cool. What um, what's one of your favorite audio books, real estate or non real estate related, or books and? Uh, you know, uh, let's see. I I'm in the process. I I, I listen to a lot and I, and I read a lot because you you know you got to because you got to grow yourself. But yeah. um, 
I'm in the process of finishing one up right now. It's by a, a, a gentleman who's in the Marines, and I, I can't quite think of the name of it. But um, you know, I, I love uh, I love John Maxwell. You know, he's kind of old school, but he really kind of helps you get your your mind and your thought process right. Yeah. Um, you know, and uh, I've just finished a fun book, uh, all of Warren Buffett's quotes. Uh, you know, he, uh, he seems to be a quirky old guy, but sure. He sure got a lot of wisdom in his, in his quotes. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. That's great. Um, if people want to get a hold of you, what's the best way for them to get a hold of you? Yeah. So, uh, well, they could, uh, they could catch me on Facebook with you or they could, uh, they could, uh, just go to my website, shannonrobnet.com. They can reach me at shannonrobnet at gmail.com. I try and keep it simple. If I can't remember my first and last name, it's time for me to take a vacation or something, right? But yeah. shannonrobnet.com will get you to me. Yeah, awesome. Great, Shannon. Well, thank you so much for being on the podcast hey, Mark, I today. It. Yeah, that was great. We'll talk to you later. Take care. All right, have a great one. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Become a Billionaire with Me podcast. If you liked what you heard, please help by giving us a five-star review on iTunes. If you have any suggestions, please feel free to make a comment in the comment section. Let's become billionaires together.